In this video, I'm going to give you an update on what I've been doing to my 1997 Saab 900 convertible. Since the last video I uploaded, probably a couple of years ago by now, I've uh, fixed quite a few problems, including the roof, which uh, now opens all by itself. Um, and I've also added a few bits and pieces to make it easier to live with. Um, there's still plenty to keep me going though, um, and I'll show you a few of the problems that the car still has. Um, I'm showing you just now the roof mechanism, um, which does now all open by itself, which is really great because in the last video it didn't. Um, the only thing is it does slightly touch uh, onto the tonneau cover as it goes down and as it comes back up again, but it really isn't that much of a problem. Um, so I'm happy with all my fixes to that. Thank goodness. So let me uh, try and remember what some of the things I fixed in this car. Um, the first thing is this, which is the um, control knob for where the uh, airflow comes out of. Um, it now turns! Yay! Uh, which is rather good. Um, the problem was actually that the um, I thought the whole system had seized up, because that's what the internet told me, um, but actually um, having taken the knob off it was actually just um, uh, cracked inside so buying a new one uh, for a couple of pounds from eBay um, sorted that very easily just put the new knob on and it grabbed the um, plastic that's behind it um, well enough to be able to turn so really happy with that um, the other fix that I've done that's on this panel here is this lovely button here which is the heated rear windscreen which I don't think it'll work at the moment because the roof's off but um, it was uh, it had failed it didn't work it heated the mirrors I could tell but not the uh, window itself. Uh, I worked out eventually that they, uh, I narrowed it down by doing some electrical testing to the fact that there was just simply a cut wire uh, or a wire that had broken uh, in the hinge mechanism. Uh, I managed to sort of wedge the roof open halfway which gave me access to the hinges um, and then I was able uh, to, to fix those there, over there, uh, under there somewhere uh, are the hinges under the tonneau cover. Something I haven't fixed, sadly, is the instrument cluster. Um, as you can see, it's showing no revs and a full fuel tank. Uh, it is showing low temperature, but I think that's probably because I've only just started it. It does The temperature gauge does usually work. Um, the rev counter and the fuel gauge both eventually come to life, but it takes about 20 minutes, half an hour of driving, and then they suddenly, especially the rev counter, bungs back into life, and then it works fine for the rest of the journey. The fuel gauge only works intermittently. It generally shows full, um, sometimes the correct level, sometimes empty, but usually full. However, on this information display here, um, it's actually completely accurate. Um, it, when I fill it up, it changes. When I drive, you know, really economically, it goes up. When I drive really uneconomically around town, for example, it goes right down. So um, it's absolutely accurate. So the fault is clearly with the wiring going into the instrument cluster itself. I've been to an auto electrician um, who said he could do it and then it's a common fault, the part of the um, uh, plastic wiring that goes to the back of the instrument cluster uh, will have failed or will be cracking. Um, but it involves taking most of the dashboard apart to get at it. And one day I'll do it, um, but it's not bothering me that much at the moment. Another exciting development is this, which is my uh, wind deflector. It lifts up like that. Uh, it's an absolute genuine uh, Saab item. It completely fits. There are some lovely, I don't know whether we can see them, but there are some little um, holes, there we go, um, that I had to create in the side of the trim panel uh, with a drill. It was a bit scary um, drilling into my car, but it was uh, worth it in the end. Um, and these pop out uh, like that when you want to actually take the uh, wind deflector out. And there's a lovely leather cover uh, or leatherette cover uh, in the boot that it fits into to, uh, to get rid of it. Um, it really does work, I have to say. It makes driving the car um, with the roof down and the windows up absolutely acceptable most of the time, uh, even up to sort of dual carriageway speeds. Um, it used to really buff it from the back, um, kind of went down the back of your neck and it was really noisy, but the wind deflector makes such a difference. Um, couldn't believe uh, how much difference it made. Uh, I bought it second hand 
uh, from Gumtree, I think. So in the back here is where um, there are a few changes. Um, I fitted, you see, fitted some reverse parking sensors. Um, an incredibly cheap kit. I think it was from Amazon. It was about 10 or 15 pounds. It's called KK Moon. Um, and it's really good uh, because the car, the way the back of the car is designed, especially with the roof up, you really cannot tell where the end of it is. Um, you can't see at all and it's got a really sticky out bumper as you can see. Um, so I've, I've banged it against uh, bits of my fence in the driveway over the years so I really didn't want to do that against a real car. Um, so I fitted those. Um, it was very easy to do, wired it into the reverse lights. Um, so yeah, that was really good. And then, oh there it is. There's a little unit there. Um, so yeah, it's very good. It's wired into the reverse lights. So when I put it into reverse, there's a little beep that tells me that it's activated and then um, it then beeps when I get close to something. It is a little bit scary because it doesn't activate until it's pretty close to the thing that you're driving towards. So I always get slightly scared that it's failed, um, but it does work every single time. So I should trust my wiring. Um, one thing I've removed from here, which is why it's visible, is the CD uh, changer, the six CD changer because um, we discovered uh, with the auto electrician that it was draining the battery quite significantly. There was a fault in it and um, it wasn't switching off and so if I left the car for a week the battery would be dead. Um, so I've simply removed it for the moment. I do have a spare in the attic um, that I might fit at some point but I've actually, I don't know whether you spotted inside the car earlier, I've got a um, an FM transmitter now that uh, transmits from my phone. Um, and it does a really good job. You'll see that's the wind deflector uh, cover. Uh, just get that out of the way. Um, and the other thing that I repaired in the boot uh, is the tonneau cover motor, uh, which is hiding under this bit of trim panel here on the right and under there. Um, essentially, so that's why the roof wasn't opening and closing properly, um, because the teeth in the tonneau cover motor had um, popped out from the other uh, side of the motor and so it wasn't making full contact, full connection and so it wasn't able to strongly lift the tonneau cover. It's an incredibly common fault for these cars um, but there was a kit um, that I got, I'm guessing from eBay but I can't quite remember, um, to repair it uh, and it was a horrible job to do. I had to take it all out um, and the kit, the strengthening kit, um, I think put a um, a bar over the motor to keep it shut and so that we didn't so the reason it opens is so there's an override a manual override and I've essentially destroyed the manual override uh, in order to make it work by forcing the two halves of the motor to clamp together um, to give it strength so that it opens but it's worth it and it, it uh, it's good there's a video somewhere on YouTube I'll put it in the link um, that was really really helpful told me exactly what to do in terms of mechanicals, I um, haven't really had to do that much. Um, there was uh, a little problem with the distributor cap. Um, there, there was a small hole in it and it was arcing uh, onto the, uh, I think this is a, a water cable, a water pipe, um, and it was really misfiring badly, but that was easily um, spotted. Um, so a new distributor cap sorted that. Um, and I've rerouted this slightly so it doesn't uh, rub against the, um, the, the distributor cap like it was doing so before. Um, other manual uh, mechanical thing I've done is I have changed the automatic transmission fluid um, and flushed that out. Um, I was hoping it would give me more power, but it doesn't. It's made very, very little difference, but I'm sure it was the first time it's been done, so it was worth doing it. One of my next jobs to do on the car is, I don't know how well you can see, but is this lacquer peel um, that's on the top of this wing. Um, it's really quite bad. Um, and also over here on the top of the, the back uh, quarter wing. Um, I'm hoping, I've bought some um, clear coat and I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it myself with sanding it down gently um, and putting some new clear coat on. We shall see. Um, I might do a little video of that when I get round to it.
a slightly transformative job um, I did on this car was uh, replace the uh, indicator uh, housing lenses on both sides and the front. Um, the previous ones had gone really cloudy and milky. I tried to clean them up with um, sandpaper and um, polish and that kind of thing and it lasted about a week before they went cloudy again. Um, so a friend of mine very kindly bought me a pair of these lovely very clean and clear um, indicator lenses which I very happily fitted and it really does make the front of the car look a lot more um, shiny and modern than it used to. Sadly that was about as much driving as I could do uh, in this current lockdown. Um, just move it on the driveway but there we are. Um, I hope you've managed to enjoy this video. I just wanted to say um, thank you to the person who commented on my previous video about how to restart the car after it's after the key's been removed, um, which was uh, to get one turn the key to I think the first position and then click press down once on the lock uh, button. The light on the dashboard flashes once, which means it's then demobilized and then I can start the car, which has been incredibly helpful. So thank you so much to the person who did that, um, because previously I was having to unlock and lock and unlock and unlock the car several times um, every time I wanted to start it after I'd um, left it for a few moments. So that's great. Hope you've enjoyed this video of a little update on my car um, and stay tuned for a few more cars coming soon.